He is editor of NASAWatch.com. Keith, great to have you on the broadcast. Um, China became the third country to put a man uh, out there in space uh, following the United States and the Soviet Union. Um, had a lunar rover mission. It was soft landing 2013. Another milestone, of course, came last year, uh, mm -hmm. the far side of the moon. So where do you think the program is uh, today? I mean, how, how would you compare it? Well, right now, China is doing more than about anybody else, and uh, they have an exciting mission that's going to be this year, which will be a sample return mission. And that has not been done since the 1970s. So there's a lot of exciting stuff uh, ahead for the Chinese uh, uh, lunar program. As far as the, the human spaceflight program, um, it's interesting to see that uh, Qinggong is coming in pretty much to the graveyard in the Pacific where all these things are dumped, but that a much more capable space station is going to be launched soon. So that's worth watching as well. And, uh, of course, all this week, everybody's been talking about going to the moon because it's the 50-year anniversary, and I know you've been overwhelmed by all of this, but, but give me your sense as we watch all this coverage. I mean, there was such enthusiasm. It ended up being 22 hours, and years. Nobody's gone back. Uh, well, it's you know, I remember and, uh, as a young boy, and, you know, people have been asking me, well, what, is the, what is the lesson that we've learned from this? That keeps changing. Uh, the lessons we learned uh, a few years afterwards, like, well, we've did, been there, done that, who cares? And as the years went by, we really didn't do much at the moon. Then we started sending robots back. And then we discovered that it wasn't a bone-dry place. There's actually water at the South Pole. And then, curiously, um, other countries and other interests suddenly started to show an interest in the moon. And after a while, we, 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 I think we all came to the realization that the thing we really learned in the past 50 years is we should have gone back a long time ago. And now everybody's going back to the moon. The U.S. is going back. India's going back again soon. Uh, Japan has been there, is going back. China's there and is going there again. Russia's going back. And on top of that, private companies are going back. So, um, you know, what have we learned? We keep changing our mind about the moon. And now it seems to be, you know, everybody's just getting in line to rush back. Yeah, and, and of course, we all saw those speech at Rice University, John Kennedy saying, we're going to put a man on the moon in a decade. China's actually talking about in a decade, uh, sent a manned mission. Um, talk to me about the enthusiasm of that. I, I sense that with China now, the same sort of thing. I was a kid as well. That same sort of pride that you saw in the United States, you kind of get that sense with China as well. Well, you know, it's interesting. My business partner is Canadian, and he was in China uh, just before uh, Shenzhou 1, the first crewed mission was launched. And he was telling me that you could buy Shenzhou everything, and the excitement was palatable. And as the Chinese space program has advanced, you look at the enthusiasm, and then with India, who's also looking to put people in space and is going back to the moon again, and you wonder, why are they so excited? You think that maybe they'd be focused on something else. And here we are in the U.S., and now we're kind of only interested in the moon because it's the 50th anniversary. What are these other countries getting so excited about that we've forgotten? That, to me, is the most interesting thing. And curiously, when I got a call tonight to come into the show, I just happened to come across this story where the Lego company, the toy company, did a, a poll. And they talked to students in China, the U.K., and the U.S., and said, well, among other things, what do you think of space? And which thing would you rather be? And they gave them five choices. That was astronaut, farmer, and YouTuber. In China, the top choice was astronaut. Mm. In the U.K. and the uh, U.S., the top choice was YouTuber. The last choice was astronaut. I don't have an explanation for that. I just kind of wonder that maybe the most important thing from the Apollo 11 landing 50 years later is that everybody else is now interested in going back. And I hope we really catch on to that here in the U.S. and, and hold on to that uh, as well. Buzz Aldrin had a good point, I think, in the last few days, saying that, that the goal was to go to the moon. Once you hit that goal, it was over. That the goal should have been loftier, that there should have been like, now that we've done this, let's do this. Um, is that important if you're a country like China looking to put some on the moon to think beyond that. Well, I, I look at this as doing the same thing the first time. I mean, this has been half a century. It's been three, two things since we've this. The administrator of NASA openly admits he wasn't even alive at the time. He doesn't have the memories that you and I have of this. So you and I look at this and we say, yeah, yeah, Paul, that was really great. But more than half of the people alive on this planet have never seen a person walk on another world. So to them, this is new again. It's undiscovered. So whatever goes back first, be as if it's never happened before. And I think that's actually, in a weird way, very exciting. It is. Uh, I took my son to see one of these documentaries, and afterwards he said, wow, you lived during an interesting time. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it wasn't a part of his life. So much uh, pleasure to have you in, and, and thanks so much. I know it's been a busy week for you, so we I appreciate, appreciate you stopping by.